Hello everybody and welcome back to Kerbal Space Program where things are weird here. There's no doubt about that. But we're just going to try to bring this on over a little bit here. We've overshot slightly but I think that's fine. I turned the traction control down to zero on the wheels and now for whatever reason going forward and back turns us. So um sure I, I guess that's the thing. I guess that's the thing. So we got here through use of gimbling this booster. And now we just need to get this thing rotated over. Which we can do via going backwards here of all things. And I'm going to try to arrest this turn here. Okay. It's slightly overshot. Breaks on. And bam. Wow. That just worked. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I, I was just messing around. I was planning on doing the whole thing on camera, but then I was like, this is going really, really well. I need to start the recording. And so I did. And yeah, it just worked. So the only thing that I did was I turned the traction control on these wheels down to zero. And then we used the Vernier engine's gimbal to propel ourselves forward and then turned using the wheels. So... Sure, I guess that's one way to get that done. So at this point, we need to have Lenbert head on in without... I think we have to go around to the other side here. Without destroying any of our solar panels, ideally. Actually, hang on a moment. Lenbert has one repair kit here. Let's come back over this direction. And let's grab a couple additional repair kits before we go in. So we're going to grab one, two, and three. There we go. Cool. Now we're going to head over this direction. Hopefully not destroy any additional solar panels. Lift off here. I didn't necessarily intend to land. Okay. Grab onto this ladder, and we'll climb down. And now we should, in theory, be able to repair this Gigantor. We extend that solar panel on up. Beautiful. And... Hmm. Let's retract the solar panel. <laughs> because we're not able to climb up here. So we're going to need to come out of construction mode. Let go. And RCS on. And that back off there is exactly the reason why we retracted this. So we'll grab on there. We did not want to break it. It's all good. So we're going to go ahead now and extend our solar panel. Beautiful. That's all good. We are eventually going to want to hook this up. Which we should do soon. We should definitely do that soon. But I want to get our drills deployed here. Beautiful. So we can see that does push us up a little bit over here. I was hoping it wouldn't. I don't want the weight to actually be on the drills here. So we could extend our telescoping hydraulic cylinder, like something like 10%. That should do the trick there. Brakes are all on, so that should be good. And we'll go ahead and start our surface harvester here. Now, we definitely need to extend our thermal control system. There we go. We, we see that we're overheating there, but now that this is extended, it's dropping back down. That's perfect. We'll get our second thermal thermal control system extended. Beautiful. And this may not be exactly the best location in terms of ore, but that's fine. So we're just going to get our large holding tank filling up. And then over time, we will just fill up all of our existing tanks here. Now we can come in and have some sort of a, a tanker that goes into orbit or something. I, I don't know if that's something that we're going to do immediately. We'll just start our ISRU here. There we go. Beautiful. So we're chilling at a 45% load. And yeah, we're, we're using the ore faster than it's coming in. I'm not shocked about that. That's about what we want. So that is looking good. Okay. Let's have Lenbert EVA here. And we are simply going to climb down. For safety's sake, I'm going to retract this Gigantor. And we're going to climb down over here and look to strut this in. Because it is currently not strutted. So let's go ahead and do that. So we do something like so. Beautiful. 
Strut this in, I don't know, maybe around here. It didn't like that. So like here, just avoiding that leg. Cool. And then the question is, can we grab the bottom one from here? And it looks like the answer is surprisingly yes. Cool. Just strut that in like that. Okay. That's all looking good. So that is now attached in and we'll climb our way back up. Do we get stuck here again? Nope, it works this time. Okay, whatever. That's a little bit weird, but sure. We'll go ahead and hop back in and we can re-extend this solar panel. Now we're probably going to want to eventually set these up in a more efficient configuration. That might be something that we could just say, oh, the colony can figure out how they want that to be done. Of course, we only have the two Kerbals here right now. And uh, I'm noticing that they're both male, so there's definitely going to be some population growth here. <laughs> no doubt about that one. Oh boy. But we could, from here, we can easily send additional Kerbals up, right? This is a very solid colony start. And that's all we're aiming for here is we just get the colony started. I do think that redistributing these Gigantors would be the right call for them. So they'd have like one set of Gigantors that would be here, one set of Gigantors that would go like here, and then maybe a third set of Gigantors over here. So they would be spread out a little bit more and have slightly different angles to them. That would probably be what we would end up doing. But for now, it is what it is. So let's take a quick look at our mobile processing lab here. We do have a little bit of science here. It looks like that's going to keep going for a while. So let's hop on back to the Space Center. And the real question here is, how many of these can we put up? We know we need, bare minimum, an engineer and a scientist at each of our locations, right? And there's going to be a lot of locations. A whole lot of locations. This was just the beginning. Oh, okay. We uh, don't have any lights on, apparently. We can just warp to sunrise. That's fine. That should solve the problem. Cool. There we go. So now we can see things. That's always nice. The astronaut complex here should probably be upgraded at this point. So that's now maximized. And we should check in to see about contracts. Plant a flag on Gilly. We've already been to Gilly, and I'm not planning on coming back to Gilly anytime soon. Science data from space around Minmus, though, that is something we can definitely grab. What else do we have? A satellite in orbit of the moon repair? It's not great. Uh, we have a lot of things for Minmus here. Docking things on or, or, on or around Minmus? Yeah. Our surface deployed ion collector on the moon. Do we actually have one there? Hang on. We need to find that out because we have a contract for that. So our moon probodobodyne experiment control station. We're going to hop in here. And if we don't, we can send a very, very basic lander up here where pretty much the only thing we're looking to put in would be that, that ionographer. Let's see what we've got here. Do we have one here and it's just disabled or something? What do we got? Nope. I don't see an ionographer here. Okay, so we're going to need to get one of those out over here. We do have that contract. So that's kind of going to be our top priority at this point, And then we'll work on our Minmus colony, I believe. So that'll be fine. And we can also create some sort of a, like, refueling ship that comes down, connects up to the, connects up to the colony, and then flies back up with fuel. That's a possibility. I don't know that we're going to do that right now. But for the moment, I definitely want to get that ionographer in place. So let's hop in here. And let's see what we've got. So we've got our moon landing machine, which is... Definitely overkill. This is a million percent overkill. And this variant of it is using a hitchhiker storage container. And this fuel adapter. An X216, huh? So this isn't the original moon landing machine, for sure. 
we've accidentally overwritten this. So we could make a new one, uh, or we could just go with like the Gilly landing machine and cut a bunch of the fuel out of this. If we're going to the moon, we don't need all of this. So we can drop a fair amount of weight up here. We don't need any of this except for the ionographer. So first things first, we can ditch everything in here. And we're going to call this the ionographer delivery machine. Perfect. There we go. We'll save that. We're going to remove everything except the ionographer. Can the ionographer fit into here? I doubt it with it being a 10 liter limit. Yep, that cannot. That's unfortunate. So we are going to need this container module. But what we shouldn't need is any of our science experiments. None of them. So we get rid of our magnetometer. We can keep around the photovoltaic panel for now, but we can definitely grab our heat shield here. We ditch our science junior and our service bay. Something like this. And this is now a much shorter lander. This is definitely wildly overkill on the amount of fuel. We certainly do not need these fuel adapters here. I'm of the opinion here that we don't need anything in this stage at all. So we do something like this. We ditch that. And we simply connect this in like this, except there's some clipping here. So we may want to have some sort of a strut connector here. So we ditch the TD25 decoupler. And we would go for something more along the lines of a TD12 here. And then we would just have some form. Well, for one thing, we can definitely get away with having 1.25 meter heat shields on all of this. We can probably bring all of this back. So we can put heat shields here. We definitely have the weight capacity for that. And then our fuel tanks here, we could do an adapter but I'm kind of leaning against it right now. Instead, what I'm leaning towards doing is simply putting in a modular girder segment here as a spacer, like that. Then, running some struts in order to make sure that this is reasonably solid. So the struts would run from like here up to here, right? Although that's not in quad symmetry. So in quad symmetry, we would run it something kind of like that just to make sure that this joint is a little bit safer. Probably have some wacky aerodynamics here, but I'm not too concerned about that. So if we don't have this, this intermediary stage at all, we should have a really, really, really high thrust to weight ratio here. Uh, let's see here. In stage eight, our thrust to weight is only 1.63. That's not all that high, actually. We could thrust limit these side boosters down to be like 1.5 though. We've been perfectly fine on like 1.5, even a little lower thrust to weight. So that's fine. This is definitely a very minimalistic design. There's no doubt about that. But that's exactly what we want. There is one other thing that I want in this though, and that is that I absolutely do want to have somewhere on here, probably on this side over here, I wanna have a computer flight unit. So that would be not this KER unit here, but rather this computer flight unit. We would not need four of them. Back off on that and do something kind of like this. Cool. Here's my question. Why is this more expensive than the Gilly landing machine? Oh, it's not. Okay, I was just looking at the, like, Minmus orbiting machine. That makes more sense. The moon landing machine is not actually intended to land. So, yeah, this should be fine. All we're looking to do is deliver this ionographer. We have no other contracts for that. So, that's literally the only thing this is going to be doing. This is definitely overkill. But it should be fine. We like definite overkill. So, we're going to put in a particular crew. Who do we want in this? Valentina has a lot more XP than Jeb does. So we're going to ditch Bill and Bob for right now. We're going to have Milnerd. Actually, Bob is our only, or rather, Bill's our only engineer. We could bring a second scientist, though. We don't need an engineer for this mission. Gilbus, you're it. Okay. So we'll save this and we'll go ahead and launch. And off we go.
Come on, we can do it. Load on in. Any moment now. <laughs> there was a uh, update to Parallax, so that might change some of our loading times. I don't know. We'll go ahead and throttle up, SAS on, and off we go. Beautiful. So, we're reasonably quick off the pad. This is a very stupid looking rocket, I'm not gonna lie. It, it looks ridiculous. Absolutely ridiculous. We're just gonna pop over to about here, and for the moment, we'll lock prograde. Beautiful. Beginning our gravity turn here. Time to apoapsis is, of course, increasing, and as we make our way on over here, our prograde node will just slowly head towards the horizon. It'll be too slow, but that's fine. I'm realizing that I didn't check my staging. Indeed. <laughs> we'll, we'll check that as we get further up. For the moment, this is all looking correct, I believe. Yes. This is looking correct, and we can check that once we get to orbit. Okay. So we're just pushing our way through the thicker portions of the atmosphere here. We've got about another 40 seconds of burn in our side tanks, which is a lot. There's no doubt about that. But off we go. Kind of heading directly into the sun. Not quite, you know, it's a little bit off, but close enough. Cool. We've got about 20 seconds left to burn here before our detachment. And our apoapsis height is looking good. Very good, in fact. We need to remain at prograde until these detach. That's all there is to it. Because we're reliant on these going straight, right? Which means that they have to not have weird aerodynamic forces on them. Okay, now we can head over to the horizon. Beautiful. So we're just going to chill here. We're already at an apoapsis height of 95 kilometers. So as expected, we had too much vertical speed. I'm just going to burn here until we're at like, I don't know, 150 is probably fine. I want more horizontal speed. Our horizontal speed is not as high as I would like. So we're going to bring that on over. And we can definitely ditch these nose cones soon. But we'll just keep burning here for a moment. We're about three minutes to apoapsis. Okay, 130, 135, 140, 145, and 150. Beautiful. So we're just going to chill here for the moment. We just hit space. So now we're going to, well, hit space. There we go. Beautiful. And from here, the question is, what is the staging looking like? Well, these stages can, can be combined together. Then that fires, then that fires. Uh, we need our drogue shoots to be split off into a different stage. So here. Otherwise, that looks good. Okay. So now we're going to look to circularize. And it'll be something along the lines of this. About 400 meters per second. Sounds good. And let's make our way on over to that. Oh, we should definitely extend our solar panels before we run out of power. Are we already out of power? No, because our solar panel extended. That's fine. So we're going to have a bit of a hard time turning this whole construction for the time being. But the majority of this fuel is going to get burned off because this is just our circularization burn. Another 800 to get to the moon. I'm just thinking here. Even this might be too much. We did eliminate our, our second stage. But even this might still be too much. Okay, so we're just going to get into position here and warp on forward. Okay, that'll do. So we may end up ditching a sizable amount of fuel here, but it's okay, I think. We'll be able to turn much more easily once we do that, that's for sure. Okay, we're about a minute away from our circularization burn. Ten seconds. And burn. Cool. This is, of course, pretty much a pure prograde burn, so we'll just chill prograde here. Beautiful. We're trying to push our periapsis up to be about 150. 
It doesn't have to be exact. We are now in orbit, and we'll call this good enough. It's not exactly circular, but it's it's okay. I don't actually care. So we'll set the moon as our target, and we're going to look to head on over sometime around here. We'll adjust our timing slightly, and also maybe a... Ah, no, this is a decent transfer. Yeah, that's looking reasonably fine. So, just for the record, this is our final flight to the moon for the time being. We are almost certainly going to use it as, like, slingshots to escape the Kerbin system and such, but just for the record, this is the last time that we're going to be landing on the moon, at least for a good long time. We may look to do some colony modifications or something at some point, but this will finish the moon for us for now, and then we'll move on to Minmus. And we're going to be reusing a lot of these vehicles. We'll just have to reconsider their like thrust to weights for different bodies, whether we're going to be able to have aero braking due to atmospheres and things like that. So I'm expecting future colonies to go substantially faster than the moon has. We'll use the lessons that we learned on the moon and make a few modifications, but it will be substantially similar. So we're just going to warp on over here until we're ready to burn to the moon. This will only be a 29 second burn. Although this is going to burn almost half of the fuel that we have in this tank. Almost. Not quite. So I am expecting that we're going to have to ditch a sizable amount of fuel here on the moon. But that's okay. We can use that to get our seismometer science. Okay. Five seconds until our burn begins. This is a pure prograde burn, but two, one, mark. Cool. And off we go to the moon. Little surprising it hasn't poked out here yet, but I would expect that's due to the thrust to weight of our mainsail. We are used to having a lower thrust to weight engine at this point. So it should be fine. I'm just going to lock to prograde at this point. Okay, let's we'll see how that does. Hello, moon. And what do we got here? Okay, we can definitely burn this down a little bit further. We're just continuing to lock to prograde and bringing this down until about that 15 kilometer marker that we've been sticking to. 14 kilometers should be reasonably fine. So at the periapsis here, we are going to add a maneuver and that's going to be a retrograde burn, bringing this right on down. And we'll just circularize that. And our inclination is a little awkward, but that's fine. We've got plenty of delta V for that. We could, in theory, do an inclination change, but we'll just do that, like, over here or so. So that should be reasonably fine. Let's get lined up for that burn. That is, of course, going to be a bit of a uh, ask. Our poor little reaction wheel here. <laughs> that's this guy right here. Our poor little reaction wheel being asked to turn this whole thing. So that'll definitely take some time. Okay. And we're going to be warping here in just a moment. Rem reminder that we're not after any real science here. We might grab like a surface sample or something, but that's not the point. We've just about got our science maxed out, and realistically, we will get it maxed out from our science lab, so it's okay. And off we go. So we're four hours away here. Excellent. Three hours. Two hours. We've got an eclipse going on here, and now we're jumping into the moon's sphere of influence. And in we come. Fantastic. So we're basically in position for this burn. It'll happen in about another minute. So let's just warp on forward a little bit. Cool. Five seconds here. I'm just going to lock to retrograde. This is a pure retrograde burn, so that'll be fine. And mark. Cool. So here's our breaking burn over the moon. And there we go. 
We're just uh, breaking our apoapsis down a bit further here. Our periapsis is actually overshot a little. It's at 10 kilometers. I don't love that. So let's get this flipped around and we'll just get into a slightly more stable orbit. I'm pretty sure 10 kilometers is safe, but I was not necessarily aiming for that. So this flip around took a very long time. But we're able to just push this up to be about here, and that'll be absolutely okay. So next up, we would want to set this as our target, and sometime around here, we would want to alter our trajectory to be something kind of like that. Let's go ahead and warp to about here. And of course, we're going to want to go to normal here. Okay. Yeah, this is looking good. That should be reasonably fine. We're going to physics warp forward as we turn to normal. And we're going to bring this on in. This episode might get slightly longer, but it should be okay. Cool. So we're going to warp on forward here. We're now about 15 seconds. 4, 3, 2, 1, mark. We'll call that good. Yeah, that should do the trick. And once we get hit about here, we're just going to look to do an overall braking burn. Uh, we've overshot here. An overall braking burn that will end up looking something like this. And then we'll fine tune that a little bit later on. So let's go ahead and position for that burn. Do we have to position for that burn is the question. What's our power like? It's not great right now. Uh, let's just go ahead and warp to here for the moment. In hopes that we get some solar power. There we go. Now we'll just flip over to retrograde. This is a pure retrograde burn. So we will prepare for that by flipping on over here. And this is going to be the majority of this fuel burned off. So that's excellent. This is our destination site here. We can see that I think that we are slightly off, but I think it's fine. 10 seconds until our burn is prepared. 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, mark. We're now in impact mode. And we're just going to chase this node a little bit here. Beautiful. So I don't know where our actual impact site is. And it'll take a little while to get this landing done. But I think what I'm going to do here, it is already... Oh, that was the landing site right there. Okay, beautiful. It is time to put a cut in here. So I think I'm going to go ahead and do that. And next episode, we're going to bring this on in. And we are going to land drop off our ionographer, and come back and prepare for our Minmus colony. Well, let's be done with the moon next episode. You can leave your offerings to the engagement gods in the form of likes, comments, subscribes, and bell ringings, and a very special thank you to all of the channel members for making this video possible, including Casserol, ALS Gamer, Kentuin, James, Shadow Wolf, Mlohan80, Spartan News, Nick Smarty, Video Games Are Not Real, Dimitri H, Punching the Microphone, Unisol, Kadra, Rogue Corvid, and all the rest. And of course, you. Thank you for watching. If you'd like to support the channel, you can click the join button down below the video. And as always, I will see you all next time.